Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, Stipus version 1.1 is ready and this will be a quick rundown on some of the improvements and uh, uh, new features. So uh, I only have three inputs now and that's because I decided to uh, consolidate input 1 and 2 of the previous version into a single geometry stream so there's no more clunky wiring of different types of geometry in different inputs and that's thanks to a whole new section up here which is dedicated to heuristics or you know kind of understanding what's going on what's coming in through input one and determining uh, more or less a course of action for the rest so hopefully that improves the workflow and also it um, it kind of gives a a good uh, range of different um, uh, uh, sizes and shapes of geometry which you can wire through input one right off the bat and you know have the the hda perform uh, predictably uh, there's been a number of changes in here in the parameters. The general layout is uh, the same where um, we have some um, parameters up here and then the rest is organized in tabs. And that's because uh, quite often uh, I find myself switching between um, uh, tweaking a few of these global parameters up here and a few of the parameters found in the tabs. And in general, I'd start up here in the globals, in the generation tab, and then move to the right until um, until I get to the output tab, where by default, by default, um, the HDA comes with the curves only enabled, which is kind of a safety measure, a safety check, because curves is um, that's it's a very fast uh, approach to you know working with this HDA. Uh, for something reasonably small, uh, such as this, um, which uses the new sweeps up, which comes in um, um, Houdini 18, it's absolutely not an issue to to work directly with the swept geometry uh, while dialing in your uh, you know final look. Uh, it's going to be very fast, and um, you know interactivity will not be an issue at all. It's uh, really snappy, and that shouldn't be an issue even if you go up to like 500 pieces I would say which would still be yeah fairly good you know just in the interactivity is still quite uh, quite good and so I have a few demos here which I'd like to, to just show you so you can get an idea of what's possible um, so let's start with the first one one of the, one of the big challenges for me was to be able to make um, the output of one generator be the input of another one and have the second one stick to the first one and um, here's the result uh, where I have the leaves and uh, from the first one and the input they they are the input for the second one which generates these uh, small thingies which are in this case they are only curves uh, and uh, I put a few keyframes here and this is the result of the animation. So I think it's fairly complex. This kind of uh, fairly complex thing can be achieved uh, very quickly and quite conveniently uh, with a, a very manageable, you know, node tree of just like, you know, five nodes. Um, as, far, uh, as far as interactivity goes, obviously performance would take a hit here and you can see that per frame you're gonna still have uh, you know one or two seconds a frame uh, that we will have to cook. Um, so moving on to another example of a convenience feature, which is input three. So um, input three is for uh, your metadata node. So you just wire it in here, and you don't have to take care of you know writing the detail expression uh, yourself for. Um, for the point scatter seed so that will give you a different pattern in every iteration and just so you can see what's going on what's happening when I disconnect it um, it's going to iterate and it's going to give you the same uh, pattern over and over and with this you know you give a random seed per iteration so just a neat little feature and then finally I have uh, a little bit of a you know, more 
uh, kind of a bigger, more natural looking stuff, which is a patch of land with some field, you know, grass, grassy, I don't know, field. So this one um, is, um, you know, makes use of one of the big ones for this release, which, uh, which is listening for certain uh, attributes, in this case, density and fall off. So it's going it's going to be checking, you know, the this this section up top I uh, I showed you is you know the heuristics that will uh, check for these kind of attributes. Uh, these two for uh, for certain uh, and a few more, and it's going to recognize them and do something with them. Just you know, adjust the um, the output based on that. Uh, in this case, we. The HDA is capable of generating the fall off on its own, but in this case, the custom fall off will override that. So let's see, um, let's see what we can do. I'll just um, reset all the changes here in my uh, um, attribute paint sobs, and so let's ju let's just paint uh, some density. Um, and if you hold the Alt key. It will give you uh, um, on the fly visualizer uh, for what's been painted and nothing's been painted yet so let's just put a, a big blob right in the middle and so if you hold the, the old key it's going to give you a preview of uh, you know of the mesh and let's just add some more over here and a little bit here up the radius here a little bit something like this uh, then what you could do is hold control and left mouse smooth or um, control and middle mouse to erase so I'm just gonna add another big blob over here you know something like this and now uh, kind of erase uh, some of the density in the middle by you know control middle mouse and now I can just control left mouse and just smooth this area so kind of bring back some of this density. So okay, I'll, I'll keep it at that and let's paint some fall off now. Um, I'll start maybe something like, let's make this, this part like a big one here and just a smaller one here something like this here here and same here let's just smooth a little bit over here and a sum of this one Smooth over here a little bit, and I, I think that's fair enough for now. And so let's just bump the the total count. Uh, maybe let's make it like ten times more. And yeah, that's fairly good. Mm. Let's make it maybe ten times that. See if that can handle. I hope so. The, um, I upped the, um, the max points. Uh, the default is a uh, thousand. Uh, the default I set at a thousand just as a safety uh, measure. But as I'm kind of stress testing this um, uh, these days, I upped it just to to see if it can handle. And so I think very fairly quickly uh, we can have some very complex looking uh, interesting result, a very uh, you know natural looking result. And <clears throat> what you see if you look a little bit from the top is a certain kind of pattern. Uh, and that's because um, 
that's in this case that's determined by the winding order of the mesh. Um, so the, it's also a new feature in uh, version 1.1 that you're able to, to pick uh, among five different uh, framing options. So the framing options um, will calculate um, uh, framing vectors in different uh, using different methods and uh, those framing vectors will then be used by pretty much any um, rotation, rotating or twisting or curling operation. So in that case, we have some curl, we have a, a twist, and by the way, the twist is um, weighted, so it, it's uh, discrete. It's not completely random. You can specify your weights by you know how many you want, you'd like to be twisted in one or the other direction or not and then use the ramps to, to specify where along the fall-off and also um, yes, uh, rotation that, that will also be affected by the alignment in fact the alignment is a global uh, attribute so um, it affects pretty much anything, everything and anything that has to do with the rotation and so I think that's all that kind of uh, gives you the broad strokes of what's uh, what's possible, what I meant uh, this HTA uh, for and I'm sure there is a million other ways that you can use that uh, you can just go wild with the, the curves and have them just sprout out in all sorts of different directions there is an attribute here, uh, sorry, uh, a parameter here for uh, randomizing the direction in, uh, dire direction so you can just make it curve, uh, curve and uh, curl in all so sorts of uh, crazy directions. Uh, not to mention all the possibility of using the uh, second input, uh, second output, which uh, outputs the curves only uh, as a source for um, your pyro or ocean uh, for um, uh, velocities, custom velocities. So I'll make this available in Gumroad for a few bucks. Um, everybody who took uh, part in the version 1.0 beta uh, will get this for free. Um, and yeah, I hope you like it. I hope uh, you have fun with it and I hope it's useful. Uh, thanks. Cheers.